Hello. Today I thought we'd have a little bit of fun with a block. This is a block, it's a star block, fairly straightforward to make. And I was making these blocks one day and I thought what a great idea it would be to have something slightly different but still this block. Sometimes when you go to take away food type places, they say to you, would you like to upsize your meal? And I'm thinking, yes. So I'm looking at my quilt block thinking, would I like to upsize my block? And I'm thinking, yes. So we're going to upsize this block. So at the moment it's an eight, oh, it measures eight and a half inches, so it'll be an eight inch finished block. But I thought we'd go for something just a little bit more upsize. So we're going to make a quilt out of one block only that's going to end up at about 60 inches square. That's pretty upsize from eight inches. So to that end, I've worked out that if you had eight fat quarters, I've used eight different colors in here. Um, so if you have eight fat quarters and maybe about two and an eight yards of a background fabric, in this case I've used white, then you could make yourself a quilt that's approximately 60 inches square, which has got a narrow couple of inch border around of the background as well. And also you're going to get, so you're going to get all your patches out of it and you're going to get your binding if you join up what's left of your fat quarters into the strip. So I'll show you how to cut all that. So because we're going to make it so large, we need quite large squares. So that's a little bit different from just cutting squares where you've got a ruler that's the right size and this, that and the other. So I'm going to show you how to use the markings on your board to cut a larger square than you might normally cut. So we, so what you need to do is decide if you've got four fabrics that you'd prefer to be in the middle because they're not used in the points. The points are four different fabrics and the centers are four different fabrics. So we're going to make some really large half square triangles. So pick your four fabrics that are going to be the center ones because those squares are cut just slightly smaller because we're not having to cut them in half to make the half square triangles. So they're going to be cut at 14 and a half inches because it's going to we're going to end up with these squares being finished at 14 inches which is pretty massive these are two inches it's big and so pick your four fabrics so i've already actually cut some of my bits and pieces out here and i've got my four large squares for my center four pieces already cut here um, and then for the ones where we've got to make the half square triangles we need to cut them at 15 inches so it's only a small difference and so it makes no real difference to the amount of fabric we're using but it makes a little bit of difference to how it's all finished so you need your four squares in the middle are cut at 14 and a half inches then you need to cut from your other four fat quarters a square from each one that measures 15 inches so I'm going to show you how to do that so I've, I've done some of mine already but I've got a fat quarter here which I have to say there's been a little nibbler at do you have nibbles, uh, nibblers at your place? Anyway, that was so that I could make this block to show you. There's enough left over to make a little block as well. So I'm going to start off with laying my fat quarter on my board as reasonably square as I can get it, because sometimes they're not that square when you get them. And I'm just going to move some bits here because it's all in my way. And it's quite helpful this time if you've got yourself a nice long ruler because we're working with big pieces um, a longer ruler will be quite helpful for you so i'm going to just trim off i've got a selvage up here i'm going to trim that off so i'm just going to cut that through there and i'm working on my 10 inch line because i can't work on my end line because i haven't got room and then i'm going to come along 15 inches because this is one that's going to be cut into a half square triangle so we want to come along 15 inches so if i go from 10 to 25 that'll be 15 inches and that'll give me a a strip of fabric that i still need to trim the other two sides on so that's 15 inches that's the start of my square but i've still got this little bit of fabric left here from the fat quarter so i'm going to come along and cut some two and a half inch strips right now while it's sitting here ready for my binding. I'm going to join up and have a scrappy binding on my quilt. I think that would be quite fun. So you can most likely get a couple of those strips out of that bit that's left over and then there's just a little skimpy bit that is left if you're really into using up bits and pieces. I'm sure you could use that little bit for something. But I've got two two and a half inch strips which are going to be approximately 18 inch is long because that's roughly about a fat quarter. So those, pop those to one side, you don't need those at the moment. 
Now with this piece, again, we want to trim this off. So we'll come to a 25 inch line here, because we know that works for us. And we'll set it so that the two lines that we've already cut, the edges, are sitting straight with lines on the board. And I'm just going to trim that, tidy that up, so that I've got a nice straight edge there. Most fat quarters measure in the order of 17 and a half, 18 inches. In theory, they're 18 inches by about 21, 22 inches. They vary slightly as to how they're cut, how the fabric is. But so you're going to get easily a 15 inch square out of that. So now I'm going to come back and make, come back 15 inches, which will be through my 10 inch line here. And because I've already had a little nibble at that, I haven't got enough for another whole strip, but I don't actually need one. So that's now my 15 inch square. And this bit left over is actually surplus, um, but it would en enable you to make a couple of small blocks out of the leftovers if you wanted to. So that's my 15 inch square all ready to go. We're going to make some half square triangles. So you also now need some 15 inch squares of the white or your background colour. And I've already cut mine out here because we're going to what we're going to be making is these half square triangle units. Just a touch larger than we used to. So on your background square, you need to mark the, the diagonal across. And again, the long ruler would be really helpful for you here. So you've got four colours you're cutting your squares from, the 15 inch, and you need correspondingly four of your background 15 inch squares. Here, and I had a pencil. No, no pencils today. I've already marked mine, so that's fortunate. You just want to mark a line right the way through the diagonal from point to point of your background square. And as you can see, I've got a 24 inch ruler. I need all that length to be able to, to mark that in. So what we're now going to do is sit those two together. They should be right sides together. As mine's plain, it probably doesn't really matter too much. And I might just pop a couple of pins in because it's quite a large area. I don't want that to move at all. So these are really just to hold the fabric together and then I'm going to go to the sewing machine. I've got a quarter inch foot on my machine and I'm going to sew quarter of an inch either side of that line. This line that we've drawn is actually going to end up being a cutting line. So we want to sew either a quarter of an inch either side of that. So we're going to come down here. It's so much fun making big quilts. They grow so fast. this in half, which I'll show you shortly, we are still going to need to trim our square to the exact right size. So now I've done one side quarter of an inch away from my drawn line, I'm going to come down the other side quarter of an inch away from that drawn line now. So there'll be a half inch gap between the two sewing lines. So now we've done that for two. You've got to do four of these with your four different colours. And now we're going to cut along that line right through the middle, drawn line, right through the diagonal of this square that we've got here. So that we're left with a quarter inch seam allowance. And I'll just bring the iron over. So there's nothing hard about these except just taking a little bit more care because of the just the sheer size of things, that things can move a little bit more when they're larger like that. So I'm going to press it so that the colour goes 
sorry, the seam goes towards the colour. And again, because it's quite large and this is a bias line that we're pressing, just be a little bit um, aware that you're not stretching it out of shape because that's a little bit of a stretchy line, even though we've sewn it, that will help hold it, of course. And here we have already a large portion of your quilt is already made. How's that? And I'll just show you how to trim that up now to the right size. So that's now going to not measure quite 14 and a half. We're trying to bring it down to the same size as the other squares that we're using. So it just requires a little bit of ingenuity here. And I've probably got my board around the wrong way. So we'll just move everything away. Because we can. Because I've got these markings on my board here that will help you with something this large. We kind of need all the help we can get. So I'm going to lay that so that the, my diagonal sewing line is along this line here. And we're wanting this square to measure 14 and a half inches. And it's very close, but it's not exact. And exact just makes things a little bit easier. So probably two sides are okay. So I can bring that down to there. If two sides are looking pretty good and straight, line them up with two sides on your board with this diagonal line going right through and coming out the other side. And then with your ruler, line up a half an inch so that you've got a half an inch going past that line there. And you find there's probably just a whisker, probably not even an eighth of an inch, just to trim off. And if you can pop it on this way, if not, we can turn it round, but now we've got an issue because that line won't go right through. However, it doesn't really need to because it's still going to come through up there. And the same thing will apply. You would measure, you're coming along 14 and a half inches, so pop your half inch on that last line there. And you should find that that should intersect still with that line. And there's, again, just that little whisker to cut off. So what you've now got is a nice 14 and a half inch square which will match your other squares. So you'll need to have eight of those because there's eight points on this star and we're going to start joining some of them together to show you again that it's kind of fun and I thought I had them all ready to go and here they are lurking. So to do, to do one of the rows across the quilt, for example, if I was going to make one the same layout as I've got my little star block there, I've got it so that I've got a square, so that was a 14 and a half inch cut background square. Then for this one here, one of my half square triangles, these are now 14 and a half inches because I've trimmed them all. Then I've got a green one, so that's going to want to go around that way. And then I've got another one over here. So again, it's it's just like joining up the small blocks. It's just that they're much larger. So I'll just start joining this up. And then I'll be able to show it to you we'll put together shortly. So I'm just using a regular quarter of an inch seam allowance. So even though you've upsized the block and the quilt, you don't have to upsize the seam allowance. This would be a fun, fast quilt to make if you were needing something in a little bit of a hurry or you've got some really exotic fabrics that you'd like to showcase in a quilt. So you can see I've started joining my row. I've just got to, and I would do it now in rows, um, the same as I would when I'm making a smaller block. Um, and I would be pressing my seams again so that they alternate when I join the rows together. Um, so you may have some wonderful fabrics that want using up all sorts of things but I'll get it together and just show you the finished large block so, so I've been some... busy sewing my block together my upsized block and I have come up with the largest quilt block that I think I've ever made it's 56 inches or 56 and a half actually but 56 inches square 
and I just think that's great. What a great place to do lots of fun quilting, all sorts of fun things. So you can see that the block started out being just a little close relation of the same sort of colours. I've got all of that out of two and an eighth yards of fabric, which will include a two inch border around it for the background and then eight fat quarters for all the colours. And all I've got left, I have to say, is just a few little bits of strip, so I could probably get another couple of little blocks out if I wanted to. But when we cut the squares from the fat quarters and we cut a couple of strips, which I thought I'd use for the binding, I've joined all those up into one really long strip for my binding. So my binding is going to be multicolored. So I'm going to have a two inch strip of white coming around there, and then I'm going to have my binding around that. And I think that's going to be a fun quilt. In fact, so much fun that I have made another one that I can show you finished, but the colors are quite different. So I started off with a small one and I popped a little two inch border around that little star with some fun little children's print fabric. And I have finished and quilted my large 56 inch up size me quilt block. So it's a one block quilt really. How fun is that? Oh, we're side on. We've got sideways elephants, but never mind. So I just thought that was a great idea to upsize blocks. So I've gone from two inch squares to 14 inch squares, basically. So quite a large size difference. It's, it's quick, it's fun, it uses up fabrics really well if you've got fabrics to use or if you've got fabrics to showcase. So I just thought I'd share with you an upsize me block because I think upsizing is great fun. So thank you.